Tekken 8 has been out for seven days. And in this week, people have gotten into ranked, labbed their characters, and gotten thrown by King. Everybody, without fail, is getting thrown by King. So, I'm here to give you a full holistic guide on how to deal with that. But I know you want to hop back into ranked ASAP, so let's go over this quick cheat sheet first before I go into all the detail. I'm going to cover this as quickly as possible, giving you enough detail to understand what's going on. The first one, Arm Breaker and Heal Hold. These are two chain throws, and I've sorted all of these options in the order of King's most threatening options. Okay, so you might not see these in this order, but these are the most dangerous ones, so keep these in mind. Okay, so... What does this throw look like? Both arm breaker and heel hold look like this. And if you saw my previous videos, you would think, oh, both arms are coming out. That's a one plus two break, right? I hit both punch buttons. No, the arm break will always go off even if I hit this one plus two. And if he hits this throw, this happens to me. This is the rolling death cradle. It has done about 110 damage to me, 100 damage. I took 100 damage from a throw. We don't want to deal with that. So. Even though it looks identical, we're going to make the assumption that you ate the first throw, okay? Assume you didn't break the first throw, what do we do? Chain throw hits. I'm mashing two. I see him breaking my arm. Look at the input display on the left. I'm mashing two. That's how you get out of the rolling death cradle. Yes, this is a three-stage throw, but by the time you kind of visually recognize it's happening, especially as a beginner, you might not be able to break the second throw. So I'm giving you the third one, the most important one. 99% of the time, just break this throw and look how much damage you take. 40 damage. That's like a regular throw. That's okay. We can deal with that. All right. Second throw that looks identical. Again, the heel hold. Both arms are coming out. Again, if I break one plus two, he still throws me. If he gets this second stage off, I'm doomed. I cannot do any more breaks. He gets the king's bridge here. 85 damage. That's like almost half HP. How do we break the King's Bridge? If I see him grab my heel, I'm mashing one plus two, both punch buttons. Kicks him off here, does a bit of damage, but most importantly, I don't die. And that's what we really care about. I did not die. I did not take that much damage. Look at the health bars. Doing okay. All right. We'll talk more about the throws in more detail, but I want to go to the next two right away. Giant Swing and Tomahawk. These next pairs of throws also look identical, but look differently from the last two. You see, both of his arms are coming out, right? But it's different, and there's some little blue sparks. Let me break one plus two, because I saw both hands come out. Why am I swinging in a circle? The giant swing is a one break, and not only is it a one break, it does insane amounts of damage. If your back is to the wall, it does even more damage. First things first, giant swing is a one break. I just said that. She kicks him off, no damage to either party, which is good. One other trick is if you get hit by the giant swing, because it is a true 50-50 between this and the Shining Wizard, the Tomahawk, mash your buttons so that you tech roll on wake up. When you land on the ground here, doing this tech roll is not just for style, okay? You actually reduce the damage you take. So if you're stuck swinging in a circle, I literally, I play on arcade stick, okay? I play an arcade stick, and when that throw hits me, I take both hands off of the stick and just start mashing these buttons. That's what I do. So I recommend doing the same. You're not going to move. There's no movement to do. So do that. The other throw that looks identical, just to prove that point, look at his hands. They look the exact same as the giant swing. This is a 1 plus 2 break. You can tell it happened because he kneed me in the face. These are a true 50-50. King has true 50-50 throws, and you just have to know or guess what he's going to do. You have to know that that's what the animation looks like, and then guess whether you're breaking 1 plus 2 or 1. There are some context clues you can use. Talk about those later. Last in the series of chain throws, or what I call any other chain throw. <laughs> these are the really, really long ones, and you'll see these often in beginner ranks because they made the inputs really easy. The king player is pressing either 1 or 2 to pick the next chain throw. There's not a lot of complicated inputs. He's just pressing left punch or right punch. So you as the defender are doing the same. Either you press left punch or right punch. Here I just spammed left punch and I got out. You just guess. It's a 50-50. Okay. Now there's a lot more details. We're going to cover that. First, let me talk about the Jaguar Sprint. This is the last thing in the cheat sheet that deserves information. The Jaguar Sprint looks like this. There are many ways he can go into it, but ultimately he's running at you. And the main throw you'll see is this, the RKO. He grabs your head with both hands, and he goes into heat if he wasn't already in heat. That's not what I meant to do. This one. 
it regenerates some of his heat as well. Okay, so because the throw is fully unbreakable, there is no escape input, you have to counter the sprint. If you are just not countering the sprint, then you're guessing high, mid, low. Because if you try to duck the throw, he has this mid attack, which starts a combo. That started a combo. Anyways, and if you just sit still, he also has the low, but obviously we're talking about dealing with the throw. So, yes, keep this in mind. Unbreakable throw, have to duck it. How do we counter the Jaguar sprint? In theory, you hit him low, because he's armored, but armor doesn't beat lows. You can also throw him. Let me just record it here so you can see this. Not that. Record again. Great practice mode feature. I'm a scrub, you guys. I see how the main man has these issues online all the time when he's uh, doing his filming. Okay, so I've done the Jaguar sprint throw. My counterplay is I'm going to hit him low to stop it. I'm going to grab him out of it. If he's uh, if he's actually in the armored state, so let me re-record it real quick where I actually trigger King's armor and then do this. What's going to happen is... If I grab him, the throw is guaranteed. I was actually late there. That's really scary. You could just put the opponent in heat. Well, there we go. You get that shining effect. Throw is guaranteed. Again, however, it's not a amazingly favorable option because he has counterplay to all of it. But this is how you deal with it in paper. In the rock, paper, scissors, you got to know your rock, your paper, and your scissors. And then there's one more interaction I want to cover that is very, very unique and is literally just discovered at the time of recording. So as you probably know, if a throw counter hits you, the throw is guaranteed. Uh, sorry, if the throw counter hits a power crush, your armor move. However, even if this happens, you can break the next step in the chain. That was too good. My timing was godlike. You can see I can still break this throw and break the, uh, the rolling death cradle. However... If I whiff a power crush, not like that. If I whiff a power crush and he whiff punishes me with it, why is my spacing so godlike right now? Right there. No input I do will break this throw. I'm mashing the two input and I got hit. So if you whiff a power crush or a rage art and get chain thrown, you're doomed. That was just to describe that effect. If you were just here for the cheat sheet, that's all I got for you. Get out of here. Maybe leave a comment. That'd be cool though. That'd be great. A little like. You know, fair exchange. Okay, let's go into the details. A lot of details here. First step, I'm talking about arm breaker and heel hold. I call these the death chains because these chain throws usually lead to death. Really creative name there. The cue, the visual cue you're looking for is this little crouch dash. Okay, so look at this. You see how he does a little crouch dash there? And then I say one plus two throw here because that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like a one plus two throw. Do not be deceived. It is not a 1 plus 2 throw. More details. The number one threat is the Rolling Death Cradle. We just talked about it in a lot of detail. I've listed here below the different chain options. And at the end of this video, I will give you a, uh, like a picture. A picture that has all of the flow charts for these throws. Where's a little sneak peek I can give of this picture? A little sneak peek right here. I think it's in this one. Boom. See that? We're going to talk about this in the next one. Uh, but first, I want to just show you literally what it looks like. Okay. So, um, Rolling Death Cradle Chain comes out of Arm Breaker. And again, you'll see that step two is the Chicken Wing Face Lock. Wait, I'm on the wrong screen. My fault. Step two is the Chicken Wing Face Lock, which is one plus two. Step three is Rolling Death Cradle, which is broken with two. So this is step one. Step two, Rolling Death Cradle, step three. You can break the Arm Breaker with one, but his counterplay to that is the Standing Heel Hold. Right here. These are the three options. If you want to see what the options look like, you can go into practice mode, select from the move list, and now you don't have to perform these chain throws. You can just click on them, and he'll do the other ones. So this is how you can lab like the specific different options. Okay. Uh, I, by the way, I haven't included every option here. These are just kind of the initial branches. There's a lot more branches that he can do. So these are the two. Um, one thing to note is STF here. This uh, throw break is interesting because if King, again, does uh, this special technique where they mash all four buttons at the same time and see what chain throw comes out, they will get this STF. Normally, if we look at the move list here, there's a lot of specific inputs. But a trick King players use is just hitting all four buttons. Um, they understand what will come out. 
Most of us don't. That's why I highlighted this one here. This usually will come out. Okay, let's move on. The fast true guesses. These are the giant swing and the shining wizard. The cue that we're looking for is... Not an alpaca. The alpaca just walked in front of me there. That was crazy. Um, this, this throw, the blue spark throw, is if they do it at the fastest input possible. Um, but what's important to note is that it looks like a two-handed throw. It looks different than the one plus two we just saw. And they do some tricks. So king players won't just do this in the open. Sometimes they'll do it out of another input. I don't think I can do this on a pad. Let me grab my arcade stick. And sometimes they'll do something like... Uh, they'll do a little input like down back three and then do the throw immediately, right? So they'll do this and then hide the throw behind the cooldown, the recovery of another move. So uh, the, the key thing to look for is that this throw can come at any time when, you, when you're like in block or hit stun. So you have to be ready to break it as soon as that happens to you. Down back three is a common choice. King players love doing these other tricks. Like they might do, let's see, down back three, giant swing. Well, that wasn't the input. They might do down back three, giant swing. And then if you break the giant swing, they'll do it again. So why don't I just keep it direct and just do a double giant swing here. So I'm going to do giant swing. They break it. And they just giant swing again. I'm really struggling to perform this live. I apologize. Let's see if that works. The, re the, the rationale behind this is if I break this and run back in, I'll eat the second one. I missed the timing, but I'm sure you can imagine what it looks like. Let's keep going. Don't want to keep you here for too long. Uh, when you're deciding whether to guess this 50-50 because these animations look exactly the same, there's some context clues you can use, especially at early levels. Especially at early levels. Um, clues for the giant swing. Watch for having the king's back to the wall. If the king's back is to the wall, the giant swing will launch you into the wall. I don't have the spacing for it here. So let me move Nina over here. All right, and then I'm going to move myself here. I think the giant swing was the third input here. I'm going to sit still here and let him throw me into the wall. And it wall splats for extra damage. You don't get that tech roll option where you mash the buttons anymore. So that's one context clue. If King's back is to the wall, he might giant swing. The other context clue is consider the fact that this input for giant swing, looking at the move list here, uh, at the bottom, he has so many throws. Can you believe this? Giant swing's input is this forward, neutral, half circle forward. This input here. I have it. Uh, it's not selected because I, I clicked on it earlier, but it looks like this. So if the King player is slow to do their input, it will look something like this, where he wiggles and then does the throw. So if you see him wiggle a bit, that can be a little clue to break with one. The other uh, telegraph you can use to help you guess this is for the Shining Wizard, it's a running input. So if the King player starts running at you, you might choose to break one plus two instead. There are exceptions, of course, because the really, 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 really good King players can hide their animations. So again, there was the trick where you hide it behind this cooldown and then do the throw. But some king players can actually do things like wave dash into a shining wizard. So they'll wave dash at you, so you see this animation and think it's going to be a giant swing because he wiggled. And then they do this running move at you. So it's a true guess. It's a 50-50, you're flipping a coin. Let's look at the next one. The super long chains. These are arguably the easiest to deal with, but they're still pretty dumb because you're not you don't have to think a lot right so that, that's that's a good part but they still do a lot of damage and that's kind of dumb so uh let's see this is giant swing this is tomahawk and this is the chain throw so the cue for the chain throw the visual cue we're looking for is this really slow crouch dash so the the for comparison the rolling death cradle off of the uh, arm breaker is a fast crouch dash you see how fast he did that Boom. Slow wave dash for the... That's not it. Slow wave dash for the chain throw here. Slow. See that? And that matters. And even though it's a 1 plus 2 arm like animation again, the initial break is either 1 or 2. So this one is 2. You have to guess. Fun. Um, 
I mentioned it in the cheat sheet, but here. The chain throw break is one or two at every step of the chain. The except Whoa, that was a cool animation. It changed the whole camera angle. Uh, the exception is really, really experienced king players will sometimes do the one plus two ender, where you have to break one plus two to get out. I don't consider this a risk you'll run into at early ranks. The reason is it takes a precise input for one, so they have to know the specific combination of buttons. And two, it does less damage. They are stopping the chain early to guarantee damage. And that kind of decision making is something you see more often in uh, intermediate and higher ranks. So for your cases at lower level, just mash one or two. Just pick one. Don't do both. You can, I guess. But you'll more likely miss it. You want to see if they're picking one option consistently. And then just break the one plus two. Okay, that's what you want to do. Now, they can alternate between different chains, so you might be wrong. But again, you're coin flipping, so don't give it too much mental thought. Just pick an option and stick with it. And then I mentioned this against high level kings, they might end the chain early with a 1 plus 2. Now is the last one, the Jaguar Sprint. And this is a new addition to Tekken 8 and is really, really nasty in particular. He has a few different ways to go into the Jaguar Sprint. So the first one is he just points at you, right? He's like, I'm going in. <laughs> the next one is this armor flex. He can flex the armor to beat your pokes and then run at you while you're recovering from your move. So just to demonstrate. And I'm going to put him in heat. I'm even going to put him in heat to make it even scarier. Uh, activate heat. Let's play this option. Now, he flexes, ate my pokes, and now he's running at me. And I have to guess, right? And in that time, he could do a throw super, super fast. So that's the second cue, is he, he flexes with armor and then he runs at you. Another one that goes into Jaguar Sprint is his heat smash. He immediately sprints into heat. That one is really, 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 really scary because you're dealing with negative frames at this point. He has frame advantage, so you can't even mash against him regularly. He's going to sprint at you, and now you have to guess, right? Horrifying. Horrifying stuff. If it hits you, you don't have to worry about this, okay? So if it hits you, yes, he can run at you manually, but it's not going to be like you're immediately dealing with a sprint like this, okay? Um... What else does he have? He has the heat smash. He has an armored kick up forward three plus four. This one can go into the sprint, but only if the kick hits. So, for example, if he whiffs the kick, he's not sprinting at you. He can't. If you were to block the kick, it also does not sprint at you. That's the wrong input. If he blocks the kick, no sprint. Only if the kick hits, he runs at you and then mixes you up. And then finally, he has a position change throw where he can sprint at you right after. If this throw hits you, it's a 1 plus 2 break. Uh, then he can just do this mix-up free. Right? So, your best bet is to break this initial 1 plus 2 throw. But if you didn't, then yeah, pre be prepared to guess. The throw is a high. The elbow is a mid. Enjoy. That is the Jaguar Sprint. Now, uh, let's cover the Jaguar Sprint options really quickly. So the throw is the high, I've been mentioning that. Uh, he has a unique two-arm animation here where he hugs your head. Uh, it's unbreakable, you must duck. We talked about that in the cheat sheet, just a quick reminder. In heat, he runs with armor, so you can't like poke him out of it. You have to hit him low or throw him. But he has options to cover that, so I'm going to show you that right now. If he sprints at me and does this, and I try to go low... Oh my god, he's sprinting. Let me try again. He jumps over my low. Can you see that? Look at how fast that is. That time it didn't come out in time. I'm going to react to his animation here and do it as fast as possible. If I see him, if I don't have a strong read, like if I'm visually reacting to the fact that he just pointed at me, my low will be too late. This is Nina's fastest low. It's a down four. And unless I super precisely read his option, he will jump over my low. He has other moves that jump too. He has a mid. So it's not just a matter of ducking, right? If he goes low and throws, I can duck both. What if he does this? Now, all of a sudden, I can't just duck for free. Because I want to duck the throw. I want to duck the low. But now he's jumping over and hitting me mid. King's Jaguar run is a true coverage option. You really have to guess. There's no easy solution. People will try to convince you that there are easy solutions. 
However, there's not. Now, there is, there are decisions you can make. They're not guaranteed, but these are options to consider, okay? So the first one is you can play the neutral game just hitting him as often as you can. Try to prevent the sprint from coming out in the first place, right? This is a solid option if you think he's going to sprint all the time. King is not helpless to this. As stated, he has this flexing armor. He also has counter hit tools. So if this counter hits, this is an uh, 11 frame counter hit, I believe. Unless it's 12. Let's turn on the display settings. We can check the frame data in game. Go back to record. This is a 12 frame counter hit. So if you're slow on your poking game, he launches you. So you can't just poke him for free and just do whatever you want. You have to contend with the fact that he might counter hit launch you. As stated, he has this armor flex. So if you're poking him really fast, he can do this and then sprint at you anyways. One other thing to be concerned about is uh, when he does a giant swing, for example, this comes out in... Oops, I'm not controlling him. When he does giant swing, this comes out in 10 frames. Oh my goodness. Execution error. 10 frames. If a throw counter hits you, it's harder to break. The break window goes down to about six frames. I believe at the, at the last time of testing during the beta test, counter hit throws have a six frame break window that's virtually impossible. So you can't just mash at him and risk getting counter hit thrown. Your jab is 10 frames, his break is 10 frames. He also can hop knee you. So if you're going low in the first place, he can just hop knee you, start his combo. I don't know the combo. I'm not even going to pretend to. So the summary of all of that ranting is that Jaguar Sprint is good, it has counterplay, but no counterplay is high coverage. No matter what you're picking, it ends up being a rock, paper, scissors. That's what makes King so powerful, is yes, everything is weak, so if you get predictable, you will lose. But if you are truly varying your options, it's completely deadly. Everything has a counter, and King gets so much reward off of it. Thank you for sitting through all of that. Let's review the cheat sheet one more time, okay? These are the two... Uh, the, everything comes in, like, ambiguous break pairs, okay? So, the Rolling Death Cradle is the scariest one. It looks like a 1 plus 2 throw, but it's a 1... Or, uh, the initial throw looks like a 1 plus 2 throw. It's a 1 break. If you get caught and your arm is being broken, mash 2. Okay? The second stage one, for your curiosity, is a 1 plus 2 break. So if he breaks your arm and you're mashing 1 plus 2, you'll get out of this one. Okay. Um, next thing, the standing heel hold. This goes into King's Bridge. This is a 2 break on the start, despite the fact that it looks like a 1 plus 2. If you fail the first stage, you mash 1 plus 2. Otherwise, if you don't kick him off here, he gets the big guaranteed King's Bridge. By the way... I know I'm repeating myself here. I want to show you the giant flowchart uh, infographic at the end. So, it'll be worth sticking around. It'll be timestamp too. You can just jump to there if you want to see these again. If you're tired of me talking, I get it. Okay? I like hearing myself talk. Giant swing coming out. If you get hit, mash your buttons so that you tech roll. That's really important. By doing this, you reduce a bunch of damage. You can't do this at the wall. But it's very important for making sure you get more chances to interact. And then finally, the giant swing is broken with the one throw. But because of the animation, it's a true guess. You cannot react. Here's the shining wizard. Same animation. One plus two break. Looks like that. And then we talked about the super long chain throws. You just hit one or two or one or two or one or two. Guess. Don't hit both. Uh, don't really hit both. Just guess one or two. And then we just talked about the Jaguar spin. I don't need to talk about that again. Let me show you this infographic. So there's a user on Reddit... A couple users, one of them did corrections, and one of them did the actual image. This shows every throw break option, how King is going to input it, and what the counter is. So here's the guide up top, King multi-throw, chart created by Phil7. Thank you for uh, posting this and sharing it with people. I'll link it below. Uh, correction by Hayate, E-I-N. Employment identification number. Uh, and then mash edit by Gizmo. I don't know what that means, but I wanted to credit everybody. The code here is blue means one break, yellow means two break, uh, you can do either depending on how King does it, and then red is a 1 plus 2 break. So we just talked about it, so let's review. Look at the notes on the right. Arm breaker, right? Arm breaker into rolling death cradle. Number one threat is uh, rolling death cradle. Arm breaker is a 1 break, and it's blue. Makes sense. These are the other options I didn't talk about, so you can study these as well. But the highest priority is this chicken wing face lock into the rolling death cradle. The 2 break. King's bridge comes out of standing heel hold. 
Indian Deathlock is the key one because Kingsbridge is 95 damage, okay? These are his super long chain throws. Okay, so the reverse, uh, I'll skip to that section in the notes. Super long chains. And as you can see, it's one or two, one or two, unbreakable, one or two, one or two. The damage is close enough that you might as well just guess. It could really go either way. These chains, by the way, are slightly out of date. King has a few less options here, but your counter as the defender is going to be the same. Reverse arm slam is another one, uh, one break, mashing all four buttons, and then one or two, one or two, one or two. Cobra clutch is one I did not talk about, but the solution is the same. The telegraph for the animation here, just so you can see, is he spins at you. He spins at you and then does a throw. Okay. The details are not as important because your solution as the defender is the same. One or two, one or two, one or two, you get it by now. There are these one plus two breaks, and that's what I mentioned where a high level king player will stop early to guarantee his damage. I don't think you have to worry about that. If you're at that point already, you're probably at a high enough level where you didn't really need to watch this guy. But if you watch it anyways, I appreciate it. It's gone on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment if you enjoyed it. If you want to see some more, subscribing would be awesome. And let me know if I missed something. Sometimes I miss things, sometimes I make mistakes, and I'm happy to correct them in the comments. So, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.